Joining me now, two stars of the UFC, both based in Sacramento and two just all-around good guys, Uriah Faber, the UFC Hall of Famer, and UFC featherweight Andre Touchy Feely. I really can't thank you guys enough for joining us during this crazy, hectic time. And uh, I'll start with you, Uriah. Just what's going on in your life? Oh, bro, it's full-time stay-at-home dad. It's been awesome. <laughs> I was like – I've got my uh, phone plugged in outside here because my phone was dying. So sorry about that. But uh, oh, good. yeah, it's been good. Just it's kind of scary with the with the economy going on, and uh, you know, I, it, the the actual corona seems seems like it's it's fairly under control. I think you know it's it's a lot more similar to the flu. It seems like than than the you know the Spanish flu of eight nineteen eighteen. So uh, I'm 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 feeling fortunate about that and uh, enjoying the time with my baby and trying to figure out next steps in the business world. How about you, Andre? I know things right now, I mean, it's so hectic and chaotic. You guys are fighters. You have routines going on, but this thing kind of disrupts that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm a person who does a lot better with routine and structure. I can't be left on my own devices for too long, get a little self-destructive. So it's been, it was rough. It was rough the first maybe week or so, but, um, and I just kind of made a point to, to get myself into a new, into a new routine to just kind of find a, a new rhythm and, and stick to that. So I have a pretty solid, um, I have a pretty solid routine I'm sticking to now. I'm still getting some park workouts, some solo workouts in some one-on-one -on -one stuff, staying sharp, getting road work in still, still training however I can. And it's, it's been, um, you know, it's obviously a, a pretty hectic time. It's super uncertain and it's definitely scary, but, you know, just making the most of it and actually enjoying certain parts of it. Like I have time to do things that I, that I, um, you know, it was hard to find time for before. Like I'm reading a lot more. I'm, I'm learning a language. I'm, uh, I'm learning a second language. I'm reading, I'm listening to audio books. I'm, I'm getting outside more. You know, I've been, I've been training where I can, you know, at parks. So I've, I've, I've tried to find silver linings in it. I think I've done an okay job doing that. And, and um, I think that's really all anybody could do. What, what language are you trying to learn? Uh, I'm learning, I'm, I'm Hawaiian Samoan, so I'm learning native Hawaiian and it's hard as, oh, it's so hard, dude. It's not like, I was like, I, I was like, I, I downloaded Duolingo to learn Spanish because I'm like, I live in California, Spanish will be super useful. And then I saw that Hawaiian was an option and was like, oh shit, this won't be useful at all, but I want to learn it. Uh -huh. And it's, it's, dude, it's, it's not latin based obviously so it's completely unfamiliar it's so hard it's so different every word is like super long with like three-fourths of the letters in a word is vowels like it's back to back to back vowels and it's just like it's crazy dude but i'm terrible at it but i'm, I'm learning a little bit i'm trying everybody quarantines differently uriah look at that he's picking up a language any hobbies that you're going with at the moment man you know i've been looking at a bunch of stuff to uh to kind of mitigate the damage that's going on and and some projects that i've been working on for a long time i can focus some more energy on I, you know we had our movie drop which was which was awesome you know that's, that's something that that we've been working on for a long, long time and to have it launched you know all over the canada and, and you know the a lot of the islands cg islands in the in you know everywhere domestically has been been really cool uh, and then working on other projects, you know, so it's, it's, it's like you, like you said, I've been just as busy between family time and trying to wrap my head around uh, what's going to go on in the business world. That's awesome. You mentioned the movie. I know that's why we got you here. I got it right here in my hand, watched it last night. Uh, I'm a huge fan of thrillers. Um, th th I had to go to the Red Box, so I didn't do the on demand. So I definitely did Red Box. <laughs> you have to go to Red Box at I was curious because, I mean, you can get it on, on iTunes, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it on, you know, on demand, on ATT. I mean, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, Redbox. I went to Redbox because um, some of my streaming stuff at the house, I haven't quite mastered. So if it's not Netflix, it's not Hulu, uh, some of those things I'm a little technologically not – savvy with and i was like you know what i know Redbox. i stand by Redbox. i'll grab the you know cleaning utensils and wipe down the whole kiosk and uh i was able to score, score the dvd last night and I, I went through it and watched it and uh like i said i'm a, i'm i'm the perfect target audience for this because i love 
thrillers, and especially if you have a sociopath in the movie, uh, I'm locked in, and you guys definitely did both. And uh, I, I want to I start with you, right? Uri. I talked to you recently about this movie, how it kind of came to be, and I was just impressed with this for being your first movie that you really put everything behind. I thought the execution was pretty fantastic. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things. I mean, I, I love the product for sure, but there's a lot of things about the movie that people will never know that that, that make it pretty unique and, and, and a big win for us. Um, you know, knowing how crafty we were with the budget and um, the fact that that was really just a bunch of people that kind of wanted to flex their, their muscles and, and the writing and the, and the, the directing and the, and the acting portion. So it was, it was a real co-op of, of people that want to prove that they can do something. And, and so I, I wish I could take more create creative credit for it, but it was more just believing in the people that in their, in their own individual pieces. And, and uh, I think it turned out well. And, and especially for what it is, it's, it's a thriller. It's, it's a simple movie. It's 80 something minutes. It's not, uh, you know, a, a studio movie, hundred million dollar budget, but, but we, we did an amazing job and, uh, people are really going to enjoy it. And for Andre, I mean, look, there, there's a, a number of great moments in this movie. And one of them was seeing Andre make his, uh, acting debut here. I, I've seen you in music videos before. I've seen you on on stage with a band, and I've seen you in the Octagon. And here you are as an actor, and you looked every bit of the part. What was it like, kind of being Thank a you. part of this? Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm trying to suck as <laughs> trying to suck at as few things as possible. So I appreciate that. Um, or I guess I'm trying to not suck at as many things as possible. That's how I, I word it. I'm trying to not yeah. suck at as many things as possible. Um, it was an awesome experience, man. It was cool. Everybody else on set was a real legit actor. Everybody has a, a lot of feathers in their cap, and, and I just wanted to make sure that I could hold my own and, and not come in. I didn't want to come in and be um, just be like the fighter guy who can't act, you know, so I really did my homework and made sure I knew my lines and tried to be as, as I don't know, if the, I don't, in MMA it'd be coachable. I don't know what the, I don't know what the acting word would be, but I tried to be as coachable as possible if, if the director gave me some direction, I tried to follow it as, as, as well as possible. And um, I just went into it really like, you know, having fun, but taking it serious. I, anything I do, whether it's music or, 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 or music, music or acting or, or fighting, obviously, but anything I do, I want it to be able to stand on its own. You know, I want to be one of the best fighters in the world. And then when I act, I want to be a good actor, not for a fighter, but a good actor for a, a good actor. I want to, when I make music, I want it to be able to be in a playlist full of, other good music and have it stand on its own. I don't want it to be gimmicky. You know, it has to be real. It has to be organic. It has to be good. So um, that was the mindset I went into with just take it serious. Don't suck, you know, <laughs> uh, do it, do it real, do it right. And Uriah, I mean, you've known him wanting, I, I guess when I talked to you recently, uh, it sounded like you, you had known about Andre's passion and wanting to get into acting and do this. And here you are, your first feature film, and you're throwing him into it. Any hesitation in how in doing so? And I imagine you were very pleased, like with the results. Yeah, no, I know Feely, and and uh, I know you know I've known him, and I know he, he's really talented at everything you can do while having head tattoos and a missing tooth. You know his own music, his own clothing, his own fighting and, and all that good stuff. So, uh, no, but he, he told me a long time ago cause I was, I was reading for different parts and, and, uh, I've been in some movies myself. So I always call touchy because he's, he's expressed that he has aspirations and he's really, uh, he like nerds out on the stuff and, and like studies film and studies characters and knows, he knows the, the mechanics of it. And, um, and he's not afraid to speak, what he wants a lot of people are scared to say you know what they want to do and, and you know they say quiet you know closed mouths never get fed and that's right you know the fact that he told me and so you know I, and i believe in him because he's he's a guy that follows through with what he does and he's a character too so i said yeah let's you know make a part for feely and uh and and he and he killed it and i, and I think he has a bright future and, and and i showed you know the the company that that bought Lionsgate. Uh, there's uh, Stan, who's who, who owns Grindstone. It's a Lionsgate company. He he was impressed. I had uh, Brad Payton, my 
good buddy who, who put me in the rampage with the rock and he was impressed and and you know we've, we've seen some of the reviews and, and people all mentioned how, how well Tilly comes off in there so I'm, I'm excited for him in the future and, and I mean world championship is first but uh you know he'll he'll get to spin off all the rest of the stuff when he's too old to uh just sling those those fists or simultaneously you know and 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 really take it serious for you andre i mean i mean you talked about it i mean this is something you want to do um how where did this kind of begin do you have any inspirations any people you kind of steal from or is this just you know something you're you're still I mean, how, how, how dedicated can you be going forward while you're still trying to seek a championship? Um, to answer the first question, who do, I, I steal from everyone. <laughs> Good artists borrow, great artists steal. Uh, I steal from anybody that inspires me, man. I try to take something from – I've learned so many things from so many people, Faber included, you know. Um, and I just try to follow my passion, you know. Like, I've always loved film. I've always loved comics. I've always loved tattoos. I've always loved – fighting more than anything you know so if 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 i feel compelled to do something i just do it i i I don't really i try not to feed doubt i try not to i try not to come up with reasons why not i just if i like something i go for it you know i I charge it i don't i don't i try not to second guess myself too much if i like it i go for it and um obviously fighting has to take the that has to has to take priority over everything else you know so i i treat acting like i treat whether it's doing music or, or anything else, you know, like I do as much of it as I can, as well as, as well as I can, um, to the point that it doesn't get in the way of fighting and, and just making sure that fighting stays the priority for as long as I can do it. And, you know, the goal is still be the best 145 pound fighter in the world. I, I still, I still want to prove that I'm one of the best fighters ever. Like that's, that's, that's something I plan on doing. Um, and, and I just try to juggle as many things as possible without letting them get in the way of fighting. So, um, I'll take it as serious and be as dedicated to acting or music or anything else as I can, as long as it, you know, as long as, as long as fighting stays the priority for as long as it needs to until, until I, I do what I set out to accomplish in the world of fighting and then transition, you know, it's, 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 you see it a lot. You see guys get some success fighting and then try to be rock stars or try to be movie stars or you, you see it happen all the time where, um, and some people do it better than others, but for me, fighting is still the priority. So, um, just making sure that that's in, uh, that's that's always in the in always in the back of my head. You know, fighting is the priority, and and just keep enjoying doing stuff that I, that I want to do outside of it. As an athlete, you guys are both uh, used to people critiquing performances. Andre, was this was this different for you? I mean, here you hear Uriah and myself who've seen it and saw your performance, and obviously we're we're saying how much we enjoyed it. Uh, how did you critique your own performance? Um, I, whether it's fighting or anything else, I think I'm usually a pretty hard critic of myself. Uh, I would say about half the scenes I was in, I liked my. Per- I, I love the movie. I got I, I got to do this critique <laughs> earlier today, man. He's like, I finally watched it, man. And it's the same as his fights and win or lose or draw. He's hard on himself. <laughs> I like, I'll say That's this. I though. like the movie. I like the movie overall. The movie's great. Uh, as far as my own performances, um, I like about I, it's 50, 50. I think some of the scenes I did really well and some of the scenes I would change looking back, I would do things a little different, but um, you know, I think, I think I, I did well for my first time in a movie and, and there's plenty of other people killing it to, distract from what I'm not doing as well as I would have liked you know uh Paul Telfer is one of the best villains you're going to get in a movie he's incredible dude I mean I thought I think Paul Telfer like that that dude is the is the star of the show man like in my opinion I think a lot of people did a really great job um Mike Foy killed it uh everyone killed it um but but Paul Telfer man just absolutely murdered it man he he no pun intended. He murdered it, dude. He, I thought he killed it. Like he, he, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm like really proud of him, man. Like the way he, he came across. Um, I think I thought everybody involved did a great job, honestly. To the average viewer, like, uh, you know, I, I, I love film. I'm into mute. I'm into all kinds of things. And uh, you're right. A lot of this cast was a little bit uh, not known. I mean, if you look at, you mentioned Paul Telfer, uh, he's coming from soap operas and he, you're right. I mean, when I say an absolute sociopath and someone you're just locked onto the entire time, uh, he definitely yeah. fit the bill. Uriah, how much does that help when having, when you go through uh, casting a movie and putting something together, when you see something like that come, uh, come to the screen, 
uh, and it translates that way. That's just got to be the ultimate greatest feeling. Yeah, it's good. And, and you know, the, the biggest thing is, and this is what people don't know. I've been working on this industry and learning about it. My, my, you know, my mentor, Mark Schulman, he's my longtime manager in the entertainment space. And, uh, my partner, Jared Roxburgh, I leaned a lot on Jared, who was really the workhorse in this thing, but that we have two other movies before this one that have been long since written and almost in production a couple different times. And I would say 85% of everyone in the movie had written parts in both the other scripts as well. So these are a tight knit group of people that are all wanting to, to, to flex their muscles. So, you know, there's a Point Arena one based on the small town of Point Arena where I have a building up there. And um, we have Devour where uh, Misha Crosby, the long hair guy, he's the main villain in that one. And, and, and Paul Telfer is another guy that is the main like the the co-main star of that one so uh you know we've been wanting to do something and, and kind of rewrite how things are done where instead of jockeying up like you know having to be in a movie with a big name star in a small part and this and that take people with a lot of potential and put them at the forefront and say okay look what we can do unfortunately from a from a, a business standpoint that doesn't sell yet, but everyone has to have their chance. So we're giving these guys opportunities and chances to show and flex their muscles that they otherwise wouldn't. You know, even like in the lawyer business, I talked to my, my buddy who's a lawyer. Um, he could have stayed on in a firm for a long time and never seen the court courtroom, never gotten to go to trial or anything like that and made better money. But he wanted to get in there and fight, get in, get in there and get the, 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 the lawyer, you know, in, in, in the, you know, fighting for people and everything and so everyone has their own way of doing things but we we stepped up and said okay look here's a bunch of guys with potential that might be you know mike foy could be a a, a you know a, a big name actor he's been in a lot of a lot of uh scripts and stuff with big name actors and and, and pelper's been a long time working guy but that was a uh accumulation of a lot of people that that are looking for their opportunities and had a lot to prove and i think you know, Paul really stood out. Are you, uh, are, are you looking for more, like you mentioned, I mean, this, I saw what in there, I see that you've got your own production company. Like you talked about a minute ago with some movies. I mean, how dedicated can you do with this going forward? Do you feel like this becomes kind of your bread and butter as, as the years kind of go by here for the future? Man, I've been working on this for a long time. <laughs> I mean, I was during my fight career, I was working on this stuff and understanding, mostly studying it. But, um, you know, the real, the real, the real attribute that I have had in a lot of different, different uh, fields is finding talent and then putting people in the right place. And, and so, it, it, especially in this movie, uh, I wish I could take more credit for being a workhorse, but the workhorse was really uh, Jared Roxburgh. And, and Matt Irwin, his, his DP, the director of photography. And then uh, Paul Telfer, he's one of the main, main actors in the, in, in the thing, the main villain. But he also wrote the script, his first time writing a script. Oh. I'm, I'm working on a script right now with a guy that's had 26 scripts, is a, is a writer at UCLA. Uh, he's got an awesome script, but he hasn't actually had one made yet because it's a, it's a hard process to go through. We had Danny Acosta and, and, and Paul Telfer write that script as we're getting it funded because we wanted to go on it. And, uh, and we knew all the different people we wanted to put in it. So being able to do stuff like that, that's, that's what I enjoy. Make shit happen. Like so many people talk about stuff and try to do things and things never friggin' happen. And I'm a doer. I'll, I'll make it happen. Um, so absolutely. Uh, the fight game is one of my passions. Entertainment is one of my passions and real estate. Those are my three things. So um, I'll continue to be in that that realm, and as as much of them can, can overlap, that's great. I mean, the 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 staff on this this movie was was largely based on people that I met through the MMA space. And uh, if if I if we if we hit a home run with this thing, you know, we sold it to to Lionsgate. If we do well with 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 international and and everything else, we will put some good cash back in our pocket and, and make some more movies. But you know, it's always going to go to the bottom line of real estate for me. And, and fighting is my passion. That's how I spend my day. Can you, uh, I imagine you're probably based off the performance Andre had and having some of these reoccurring people that you're working with. I imagine he's 
you'd probably have him in mind for some stuff in the future, yeah? Oh, yeah, dude. I told him a long time ago, before Green Fever, you know, we are gonna we had a part for him in, in, uh, in Point Arena, which is, is yet to be made. And, and we've got a lot of uh, – We've got a lot of stuff on the, on the, on the, you know, in the till I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link to our, our website, but um, we've got a lot of stuff that, you know, we own the rights to or developing and <clears throat> some documentary and some scripted stuff. So it's, it's fun, man. I'm an artist. I'm a martial artist. I, I'm, I'm an okay drawing artist. I'm, I'm, I like to create things. I like, I'd rather buy a house that needs to be ripped down and, and built up than one that's all brand new. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Andre, I mean, I, I wanted to ask you specifically because Uriah makes the movie, uh, but for you, how would you describe this film to people who hadn't seen it? Um, I would describe it as sort of a slow burn. Uh, I, I describe it as like a slow burn thriller, borderline horror movie. I mean, um, it, it's exactly the kind of movie I was stoked to do it because it's, it's exactly the kind of movies I like to watch. You know, it's it falls right in the same the same vein as uh a lot of the movies that i really really enjoy watching um yeah i i I think uh i think there's enough action to keep people excited who are more um who aren't like i think people who are looking for action there's enough action there but i think people who are really like real movie movie people i think they're going to really enjoy the movie for for what it is it's there's a lot of layers to it there's a lot of um there's a lot of different clashing uh characters there's a lot of a lot of um little nuanced things that you can pick up after the second or third viewing. So it was very cool to be a part of a movie that is the type of movie that I would want to watch, you know, if I wasn't a part of it. And was guys, it I'm sorry. Oh, good. Yeah. Go no, I was going to say, um, was it, was it fun working with Uriah in this kind of space where ordinarily you're seeing him in a gym, you know, working with him that way, but this way do you see him in a different kind of light. Yeah. It was awesome to see him sort of put on a different hat and, and sort of, uh, and be a producer on this and be a guy who gets things done. And there's so many things behind the scenes that it takes, you know, it's the same with fighting. People only see two guys fighting in a cage. They don't see what it takes to get there. There's so much shit that goes on and, and so many roles that people play just to get someone to the cage behind the scenes. It's not different with the movie. It, it's probably even more with the movie. There's more people, there's more moving parts. There's more things in the air at the same time. So um, it was very cool to see Faber be a guy who got a lot of shit done and who, who really helped pull this thing off. And it was cool to see him do that. And it was inspiring. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry to cut out early, but I've been making my, my training part. I'm getting a set, a, a park session and my, my training partner has been waiting for me this whole time. So I'm going to get my workout in if that's all right. Um, but I really appreciate you having me on, man. You got it. I appreciate you joining me. You're right. I hope I boys. can keep you for just a couple more seconds here. Um, appreciate uh, you guys. Thank you. From. <laughs> Thanks, Andre. Um, Uriah, just real quick, before, before we conclude here, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was just the location of this, because the location of where you were filming this, this movie was, was almost a character in itself. How much did that help kind of bring to life the story on the screen? Well, that's part of what made it happen. That's the same reason why I had written six years ago, you know, I was in the, in the midst of fighting a concept for Point Arena, California, which is on the northern coast, it's it's a town of, you know, 450 people. I own a building in the town. I know everyone in the town. I was like, dude, this is a movie set. So really, and, and Rick Lee, who's a MMA reporter, he knows because we've been working on all these other things, you know, throughout time. And he knows Jared well, uh, who's my partner in our production company. He knows that we've been wanting to just flex our muscles and say, hey, we can we can do something. And first, it was going to be Point Arena. Then we got big eyes and, and bigger ambitions for it. So the budget went up in this and that. And then, uh, you know, Rick wanted to do a, a, a marijuana robbery. He had an old experience that he thought would be a good, you know, a good jumping off point. And then uh, the, 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 the theme of this one is actually based on a true story. And that guy makes a small uh, cameo in the movie. He, he hands Lex the, the you know the guy who's Telfer's right hand man he hands him the bag of of, of uh so the very beginning of the movie when Paul Telfer's getting out of jail when when Ticker's getting out of jail but um 
So it was his story. And Jared was like, oh, dude, I got a real story that w- with, with all the twists and turns in it. And so then they had the guy whose story it was had access to the, to the farm in Northern California. And so then we were like, all right, we used all the same actors that we were already going to use for the other two movies that we've written and that, that we've, we actually filmed the nine, a nine minute uh, teaser or intro to our devour movie, which is really great. Like did that like three years ago and have been very close to getting that done, but it's a bigger budget film. So um, we said, all right guys, let's just go. Made a call to me. I, I, I helped raise the funds. I read the script. I liked the script and, uh, and, was changing the script and writing it all at the same time same time we raised raised funds wrote the script got everyone attached and and, and performed with them like a two-month period or three-month period which is crazy i mean that doesn't happen and then to have no real name talent that carries uh carries weight on on the international you know sales and everything and to be able to sell to, to Lionsgate like we, we we were able to do is pretty incredible. And and then to have a product that, that we can all be proud of on top of that is is another one. So I was pretty proud of the way the team came together. And uh, it's just like, you know, it's just like the fight game and, and everything else. It takes like, you know, being being intelligent and 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 bobbing and weaving, you know. That's outstanding. I mean, that's really that's really a testament to what you guys have been able to do. Um, I, I, you mentioned Devour, and I had re- read a little bit about it. Um, for people who might be interested in that, what's what's kind of the the update and where that stands at the moment? Well, you know what? It's it's funny because we've had a lot of different projects in the till, and nothing happens until the money gets behind it. And it's it's a I've learned a lot about the business, and and it's not like MMA when I first started where there was no weight class for me and there's three events a year and you don't really know what the heck you're getting into, et cetera. There's, there's like a real pathway and a structure to the entertainment world. There's, there's unions and there's minimums and there's a way things get done, et cetera. And there's, there's like some, some stuff that you can learn. And so just a lesson on that is, um, you know, there's a couple of different ways to get things funded there's a couple different ways to get people attached, but you need attachments to get, to get real money behind things. And you need a couple different things to get that, that ball rolling. Either a great script can attract the right people, an actor or a director, because those people are artists. They, they want to do things that, that get their blood flowing and, you know, are, are, are kind of out there. Then there's, uh, then there's, you know, what have people done in the past? So uh, if, I've been in a movie with the rock. That's better than me just being your eye of favor. I've had a small part in a movie with the rock. That's that helps me jockey up a little bit, but it still doesn't mean much rock. The rock is worth a lot of money. If I get the giraffe movie to say he'll do the movie and he has a relationship with the rock and he does the movie. If the rock would have been in this movie, it would have been the same, you know, the same concept, but it would have been a a hundred million dollar movie because he's involved. And then other actors would want to get involved and other producers, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to have a starting point. First is a great story and a great script. Then, or the money first, where you can hire the great writers that have written great scripts, or the money first that you can find a, 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 an artist or, a, or a, an actor. And a lot of times, this is the old actors that have sold out. You can just buy one of them. <laughs> you know? uh versus the young or the real path they see something they want to be a part of it but there's all these different different pieces that can make a movie work or you make something that is on a a real uh a real budget understand how how you're going to get it sold and and make a product and so with making a great product that we knew would do well and get, being able to get it in front of the right people but for the next step we have to have some talent attached we have to have writers directors uh, actors that have some names because we want to do bigger budgets and bigger budgets and bigger budgets so you get the championship like a like a uh you know like the the ufc championship you start you start out in the region fighting fighting uh at the local gymnasium then you go to the indian reservation you get the 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 guy who's got a bunch of followers that are there to see him and then you get the guy that was a has-been and then you get the guy that's a gonna be and then you get your shot in the big show and then you get a couple of couple wins and you fight the contender you beat the contender you get a title shot and then you're the champ and so that's that's what i'm trying to do in in this industry 
I'm blown away because for one, it's great to see the passion that you have. You can tell the excitement there, uh, but it's also, I've never seen the music or the movie industry and the process compared to the UFC game or to mixed martial arts. That is unbelievable. And it actually is apropos. It actually fits. Yeah, it is, man. It's for you. The, for, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. There's a lot of parallels. There really is. And, including the, the cast of characters that you find in both i mean holy crap dude it's hilarious <laughs> i mean the managers and the this and the wannabe fighters and this and that and then you get in the entertainment side it's a whole different animal it's 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 a crack up man it really is that's wild that's unbelievably wild um I, I, the one thing i do want to hit on real quick before we let you go um right now is just such a crazy time in the world and it's affecting the sports world but yet you know, your company with the UFC and, and Dana White's doing big things and trying to make fights happen. Um, what do you just kind of make of, of his ambition to try to get, provide entertainment for people out there? And could this possibly lead to something for you in the, in the near future? It could possibly. I mean, no, no better time than now to have cash on hand and, and uh, you know, a little bit of money can be turned into a lot of money if you're intelligent about it. So it's always enticing to get in there and do something you love that you actually have a real passion for. And, uh, and so oh, my opportunities are not going to be long. You know, I'm, I'm a 40 year old. Uh, I, I wanted to do four fights after 40. That was my own kind of internal personal goal that I had had because I had four fights left in my contract. I've done two of those. So um, it's something enticing hops along or or i just feel like i want it I'll, I'll, I'll jump but i need to get myself in great shape first this quarantine is not helping out because i'm taking it serious um you know and uh and but yeah and and you gotta you gotta i mean i'll tell you dana white has the grit of a fighter i mean and a, and, and a guy that that is and it's not just about entertaining the fans he wants to keep his business flowing and it's also probably the challenge of being able to do cool shit that guy likes to do cool shit yes there's nothing cool in the world than having a world pandemic happen and buying a friggin' island <laughs> against everyone's you know still staying within regulations on some level and and being able to pull that off and 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 probably make a ton of cash at least save the little bit have a lot of fun doing it even though it's you know stressful which i'm sure it is and really become a hero. Um, he's buddy by deal. Props to the boss man. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, I can't imagine what Fight Island looks like, but I'm already seeing the likes of, you know, Pedro Munoz trying to throw your name out there and Frankie Edgar. I've seen your name attached to him. Seems like always attached to Frankie Edgar. Um, is, 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 is there anything out there that's, that's kind of even piquing your interest in the least bit? Both those guys are, are interesting. I mean, this is a this is a crazy, crazy time for our weight class. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, if you look at look at all the former champions that are there, myself, Dominic Cruz, uh, Cody Garbrandt, uh, Jose Aldo, Frankie Edgar, uh, you know, you've got uh, TJ Dillashaw's going to come off the suspension. And then you have the Marais, uh, Marlon, Marlin in there and then you have like the up and coming guys like Song Yadong and and uh you know San Hagen and Peter Yan and and Aljamain Sterling and and I mean it's just a rich rich time for our weight class so who knows what's going to happen I I really have a hard time turning down a fun time in a, in a in a time to make some money uh especially when they're wrapped in together so I I, I need to get myself in that mindset a little more and, and get into tip top shape. Cause if I'm going to fight, I, I will definitely be taking it serious and I haven't been able to do what I would like to do. Uh, but yeah, you know, opportunity is, is there. I'm, I'm not, not afraid. If it's knocking, I'm not afraid to answer the door. Well, that's outstanding. Uh, it really is. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I look forward to seeing what happens uh, I look forward to seeing what happens in the near future. Hopefully we're the next time I'm speaking to you, it's in person and not, you know, over a computer. <laughs> this is yeah. wild. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, brother. And I'm, I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the movie and it's cool that, that uh, you're able to just go down and, and get it out of, 
red box. That's pretty sweet. No, and I, I dig just, the sweater, man. Loyalty, oh, yeah. baby. There you go, loyalty, loyalty. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I couldn't help myself. I felt like, you know, most there's a lot of people that'll probably do it this way, and I got to return it before the late fee hits. But, you know, uh, I, I feel like this is how a lot of people will end up taking a look at the movie for sure. Longtime manager and uh, and good friend and lawyer, Jeff Meyer, said that he went to go get it this morning, and it was our sold out though yeah each one of the no and that's a good point i'm glad you mentioned that because uh ordinarily yeah i would just show up to one that's right down the street i live in elk grove and i had to go all the way up to florin road uh to find one because i went to the website to find out which which red box machine actually might still have it so i know elk grove you couldn't find it uh i had to go all the way to florin road to, to try and find one is that because people were already renting it yeah, it already been it already been out of the machines that was you know I don't know how many that they had I, I hope they wouldn't have just one copy but uh, the machines in Elk Grove didn't have it yet but yesterday was the first day I believe it was available at the Red Box so I'm I, I'm not entirely sure how that works. Yeah, man, it's uh it's pretty cool, man. The whole come to, the whole thing come to fruition is is really awesome and and knowing. Now, figuring out the the you know the recipe and the routine that, that that to get stuff done in this space has been a big that was the biggest win for me. I, I really wasn't the creative guy on this. Um, I read the script, liked the script enough, believed in the the people that were going to actually make it happen, did my part. Um, but I wish I could take more credit for the creative side. I've got some of my projects that are my creative side that that I want to get done, but this this wasn't it. This one was was something that I believe and I love the real that's great that's great I I can't thank you enough for joining me it's been fun to to kind of catch up and and uh I continued success with the movie and and I look forward to seeing you down the road and hey make sure you keep those stroller that stroller uh off the <laughs> if you ended up gotten if you got in the new stroller make sure you keep it off the porch right that's a crazy story for people who don't know we just we just have we just have the one that, that uh that we can't run with so you know, I'll probably, I think my boy Tommy has, uh, has, has one I can borrow. That's how I was getting my workouts in, man. Just rolling. Funny. The, yeah. Just, that's it. That's it. Sorry. Just rolling the store. And, and in the, if, see, if I get this right, just for people who haven't heard, just take it. It's taken your baby stroller is taken off of your porch and you're like, I'm ready. I'm going to go find where the hell this went. I think I have an idea of where this went. And then sure enough, you find someone who has a similar shoulder stroller, but it wasn't it after all, right? After you confront them with a baseball bat and a bull whip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's kind of the story, yeah. I, I, I was driving around, I actually saw it, went back and got the protective COVID-19 gloves on. And I brought the bat and the bull whip, bull whip just in case, you know, but more just to keep the conversation to a minimum and just get my stroller, but it was the wrong one. Somebody else's stolen stroller. Why do you Whatever. have a Why do you have a bullwhip? <laughs> that was a gift. I, I don't know what it's actually called. I think it's actually called something else. But you see the picture of it. <laughs> I have I have I have my home security. Uh, I'll send you a picture. My home security at my house is like one of those racks where you hang keys. And I got some some padded nunchucks, the whip. And a uh, and a big old uh, like a bam bam piece of wood that was like a gift from from my native buddy, and that's on a string also. So it's like a piece of wood with a handle and like a big old club. So that's the home security system <laughs> on top of the event. <laughs> That is incredible. That is incredible. Someone's got to have a, have a real screw loose to try to mess with your property. That's for sure. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> Well, th all right brother thank you man i appreciate you and uh we I, I know you know great job with the stuff you did with vibe we caught up with mike uh with matt barnes um last week and um i know you guys are doing great things in the community assisting healthcare workers um if you want to give us an update or i don't know if you have more of that stuff planned for the in the coming weeks but for people who don't know please feel free to, to let people know how they can get involved with that 
Yeah, it's a GoFundMe for uh, if you go to Vibe Health Bar, the the Instagram, they're doing a GoFundMe where it's basically you sponsor a meal. It goes straight out to the first responders, people at the hospitals and whatnot, and uh, it's a way to to help out. Healthy foods, juices, good stuff for the immune system, and uh, and also keep our employees going because it's a, a tough time, especially for restaurants. It's a great thing you guys are doing, and uh, I know it's got great results. So, Uriah, I appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to text Andre. It was great to catch up with both of you guys. Continued success with the movie. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, bro. All Bye-bye. right, man. Take, take it easy.